I'm here with Greg Cohen, author of Agile Excellence for Product Managers and 20-Year Product Management Veteran. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Um, so let's talk about user stories a little bit. What are your What are your top five most common recommendations about the the creation and the use of stories in the Agile process? Yeah. So I think. And for me, the most fascinating thing about the, the user story is that it's a really open-ended framework. So it can be used well and it can be used poorly. And I think the single most important thing is keeping the user story in the problem space so that it facilitates that important discussion with the team so the team can reach a shared understanding of what that problem is and then together conclude what is the best way to solve it for the user. So I think that to me, if I can just really narrow it down to one, it's mm -hmm. writing the story from the perspective of just the problem and don't put the solution in it. Leave that for the conversation. Got it, that's great. Any, anything else on stories? That's a great one. Well, certainly, I think the one thing that gets missed a lot is that conversation. People yeah. feel that's the documentation. We can just hand it off. Yeah. And once again, that's that's the most important piece, or I think that's the most important part of the process, is you have that conversation. If we think about documentation, there's only a real few uses of it, right? One is to create shared understanding for the team. Another one can be to actually document decisions. And the third, sometimes it's required as a regulatory requirement in the industry with which you work. But when we think about user stories, its sole purpose is the first one. How do we get to a shared understanding of what the problem is and then how we're going to look to solve that problem? And that's the, the acceptance criteria. When do we know that we're done with this story? You know, one thing I, I find myself working on a lot with students is when we, when we dive into a story or, or a, a problem space, getting to the right level of detail with the stories and kind of nesting child stories under epics. Do, do you have any suggestions on how practitioners can both help themselves and coach the rest of their team to really you, you know, unpack the detail around the narrative that they that they want to discuss? Right, yeah, no, great, great question. And once, I think this goes back to our earlier, the discussion here, right? Learning new skills is hard. Mm -hmm. So just because the framework for a user story is simple, gaining mastery of how to best use it is challenging and difficult and it takes time and experience and practice. So the biggest thing is just, once again, start high, keep it in the problem space. From there, a lot of conversation and discussion should emerge. And those each can be ways to break down that story, right? New ways to split it. I often find for me the easiest way is I list my acceptance criteria and we work on that as a team and then each of those can usually sit alone and stand alone as its own story. So when the acceptance criteria gets too long, you know, more than five or seven items, I know it's time to split mm -hmm. and decompose that story mm -hmm. further. Got it. Okay. That's great. Um, actually, can I go one more point? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. I, I think the other thing too, to, to realize just about a feature is that features have life cycles. And there are times when you're looking purely for proof of concept or feasibility, I'll call it, right? Can we technically implement something? That's one piece. Um, another one would be that I need, to, I need this to get done so I can bring feedback to the team. We need to do learning here. A third one is often we're just polishing something. And a, a fourth one would be that there's a real time constraint and I think you need to bring that to and into that story process as well as, as what do you want to accomplish at that point? And, and where does that come into the process? Is that kind of a charter for a meeting where you discuss the stories or how, how do practitioners? Kind yeah, of just, maybe, maybe I jumped the gun there. That's sort of a lot on the prioritization. But for me, that is also another that prioritization dictates how you would split and decompose a story. Uh, OK. And, and when you want to actually attack that problem of decomposing the story. Uh, OK, got it. Got it. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah, sure. And, and um, what else about I mean, how, how do you as a as a product manager, how do you create a good environment for the creation and the discussion of stories? I think it's 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 carving out the time to meet with the team and socialize them. 
And often these, I think it works best, or at least I find it works best meeting with the small group of people that's interested in that specific story. So it's not that we have to bring the whole team together all the time and have people sit through stories they're not interested in. Mm -hmm. It's about letting people know we're going to talk about these stories or maybe I already know the section of the code they're working with and I go and approach them and socialize them and socialize them early. It's that grooming process before you get into the real planning meetings and also work with the QA people. So they their voice gets heard in the process as well because they're gonna come up with questions about how do I test this that myself or the developer will not. And with the, the life cycle of the stories themselves, mm -hmm. we have this idea of an informative workspace, we have uh, boards or places where we look at the work in progress. Do you have any practices that you've seen work well or not well with regard to keeping the stories visible and keeping the problem in the foreground in, in people's minds so they're focused on what's valuable to the user? Right, yeah, so the technique that I uh, find myself just turning to more and more and more is Jeff Patton's story mapping. Uh -huh. And in this case, when we think about the use, the traditional user story, you actually their goals go up on and, and the x-axis, what they're trying to achieve and then the different personas can sit out sort of on on the left separate of this so the story gets decomposed persona gets taken out into its own area what their goals are and then what is kind of the task or, or feature that that they're trying to achieve or in there and that goes in decreasing detail beneath the goal mm -hmm. and this gives you a two-dimensional view of what the user is trying to do and you can take any persona and walk them through the map and see, do they have the features that they need to complete the task and larger goal? For me, that's the best way to frame it. And then you can split those story maps by release. So the things that sit up higher are in the first release, things that sit down lower are the second release. And from there, then we take those and we decompose them into smaller stories. Because I think maybe the point you're alluding to is if you just have a linear list of stories and they're at all different granularities, you lose context of how, how does this story really tie back to the larger goal. And how do you, what's your point of view on the relationship between stories and estimation? Are, are you a no estimates guy or are you planning poker shark? What's, what's your view about what works there and, and when? Right, yeah, I know this has become a real controversial topic. And for me, I, I approach this from the product management side. For me, the estimate is very valuable. It's the first indication I have of what the cost of the story is or solving this problem for the user is going to be. And in my mind, I have an idea of what kind of ROI I want to get out of this. So it's not just how much value I can create, but it's also what is it going to cost me to create that value for the business side of this product and managing this product. So for me, estimates are really important. But what I, what has worked well is, you know, planning poker is an excellent way to teach people estimating. It's an excellent way to share knowledge amongst the team, but it can be time consuming. I had this one team where I just went to the team lead and that was a team that really had an amazing mental synchronicity. It was an XP team. They were doing pair programming, so knowledge got exchanged during the programming process and got shared. It didn't have to come through the estimating process that we used. So I would just speak to the team lead and he would very quickly come up with an estimate. It wasn't an arduous or time consuming process, but from there I understood the cost and we, if it was too expensive, we could have the follow on conversations about how might we achieve this user goal but think about it differently or look at the problem in a different way to get the same end result. Got it, got it. And what relationships do you see between the quality of these user stories and their impact on the quality of the narrative collaboration that happens and just the general effectiveness of their, of their backlog process in the team? So I think that what I talked about earlier, you got to keep the story in the problem space. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, even poorly written stories can still, I, I've seen they self-correct. As long as it drives the right conversation, the story gets refined and clarity comes to the team. 
the time where I see stories maybe be an impediment to progress is where they're written, where the solution, they're written in solution form, mm -hmm. where you just specify this, this is the feature. And in that case, at that point, you cut off discussion, you cut off creativity, you cut off the ability for the team to think about alternate ways to solve it because they may not fully grasp what the problem is that the user is trying to solve. Got it. That's some great ideas on how to bring narrative collaboration into the, the practice of Agile and, and how to make it really work in practice. Thanks, Greg.